Hello, so I am going to do a video on the Soviet or Russian IMD5 Geiger counter kit. Now you can get these on eBay and Etsy and basically they were the successor series for the Soviet DP5 Geiger counter series which is very famous and this was kind of like an improved model of the DP5V really um, but it wasn't in service all that long from what I can establish, it seemed to be almost like a stopgap model, you know that these replaced the DP5V but then within sort of mid 90s or so they were replaced by I guess the early digital um, Russian counters so I'm going to give you an overview on this because all the equipment's come for it now, I'll explain that a bit in the video um, and give you an overview of it, but if you're familiar with the DP5 series you'll basically know exactly how this works um, Surviving the Apocalypse has also done a very good video on this so I'll give his channel a shout out there, watch his video on it um, so basically what I've got here is the extension wand with the probe um, and that's the idea is that although you can have this neatly tucked away you can have this so you can basically measure samples further away from you without getting as close to contamination and you don't have to keep bending over and hurting your back to uh, measure samples on the ground which is useful here's the unit itself hanging off of me with the um, straps and I've also got the headphones on so I can hear it ticking and yeah it definitely works so um, let me demonstrate it for you okay so here's the IMD5 itself so basically it uses the exact same range selection switch as the DP5, it's just chunkier and easier to use. So I'll go over the controls and the specs of the unit very quickly. So here is your control panel, so you can have off and battery test at the top, and then you've got all the ranges. So it starts off on 0 0.1 and it goes up to the top to 200. So basically how the range works is on that display, on the zero mode, and this is measuring background radiation at the moment, this is basically on 0 0.1, so you read the top scale and then you uh, put basically an extra point in it. So where it's between 0 0.5 and 1, that's actually at 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 um, millirad per hour. This is actually interestingly in rads, um, or essentially the same unit as a rem, rather than being in Ronkens, um which is one of the changes in this. The main this notice thing you notice between this and the DP5 is basically the mo most of the unit is taken up, like half the unit is taken up by the screen, not about a third of the unit, which is actually really nice because it means the display is much easier to read at a distance and you've got like a bigger, bulkier needle. So basically you've got your ranges, so 0 0.1, 110, 100, 1000 and then the 0 to 200. So on the top range one, 0 to 200, what you actually do is you read that bottom range. So that's 0 to 200 rads an hour. 200 rads an hour is 220 to 230 odd Röntgen per hour, so very dangerous levels of radiation. Basically it operates the same way as the DP5, it uses the same probe as the DP5V pretty much, and the idea is that you can have the beta shield open or closed, and there's a strontium-90 check source inside, which I can demonstrate now. You won't be able to see it, but it's in the sliding cover. So what you do, if you wanted to just check your unit was working, you get this cover, uh, you get the bit with the little bulky bit on it, and that's your strontium 90. You slide that onto there, and as you can see, that's going up. So we go to the next scale, and that's still off the scale. We go to the next scale. We can either cancel it and let it go up. There's also a light on there. Um, it's got a glow-in-the-dark back screen as well. But basically, the point of this is that, um, you know, the internal check source is that inside the probe, where it's not going to harm anyone, you can swivel that on to just quickly do a field check to check your uh, unit's working. And I think that's about 11 millirad per hour, the strontium-90 source in here. Because I think that's where it always seems to finish up. Sometimes with the documents on these, you can find out exactly what the calibration is and all that. But um, as you can see, that's between about 11 and 12 millirad per hour. Um, so that's how you just know the unit's working without having any radioactive sources. And the cool thing, of course, is if you buy one of this, you can actually get the unit to do something, even if you didn't have any radioactive check sources because, as I said, the check source is basically in that little probe there, same as the DP5V. Okay, so that's finished off actually about 12 millirad per hour exactly, um, looking at that. So that's how you use the unit. So let's um, now assume that we're going to use a you know radioactive source of it. So we put it onto the lowest scale, and I'd put, obviously, that. Let's put it to where the beta window's open. So basically, how you have this set up with the um, wand, if you're using the sort of extension wand, is... Um, you have it so that window is facing away from the metal. The idea being that when you've got this facing down on the floor, you've got the beta window there so you can check for contamination on the floor. So basically if there was any radioactive dust or something on the floor, you could pick it up that way. 
So here's a bit of Autonite um, that you've seen before. So what we do is to check it was working. There we go. So let's work out what scale this is on. Let me go to the times 10 scale because it's probably on that. Let's cancel that. Hold that here. Let's see where it ends up. I think probably between 5 and 10 millirads per hour. Right, technically, if you're checking beta contamination or beta contamination, you use um, a flux scale, um, which does have the calculations that on the side of this screen, but most people are just going to use a quick what's it in millirads just to get a generic idea. Because, yes, you're not meant to check beta contamination using um, sort of gamma dose units, but most people just do that because they're not there to do a laboratory sort of inspection of a sample of this. It's just how screwed am I if I'm near it. So that's basically all there is to say about this unit. It's a lovely unit. If you're a fan of, um, obviously, the DP5 series, you'll like these. If you've got the option of buying one of these for only slightly more than the DP5V, I would definitely say go for this unit. The main advantage you'll find as a user over this with the DP5E is this takes two C-cell batteries as opposed to three of the old Soviet batteries. So it's much, much easier to actually just get this up and running. Um, and again, one of the things I really like with this is the big display thing, because obviously it's a much easier unit to read from a distance as you can hopefully see with the camera. Um, it's got the glow-in-the-dark display. If I flick the main light off and leave the other light on, hopefully that will be obvious. Maybe. Is that glowing a bit there? Maybe not. Let me flick the other light off. Then hopefully you can see that, yeah, there's the green glow coming off of that. The camera's not picking it up that well, but yeah, you can hopefully see, yeah, there we go, a little bit if it wants to focus, that you can actually use that in the dark. And again, there's the bulb function on there as well. But the point is really that, you know, this is completely usable in the dark. Um, because you can either hold the button down for the bulb to come up behind the screen, the backlight, and you can always upgrade that with a brighter bulb if you wanted to, like a modern LED bulb. Or, you know, you can just uh, have the incandescent sort of glow coming off the old um, glow-in-the-dark stuff. This uses the exact same headphone setup as the DP5V. Uh, the only disappointment with the carry case, I would say, is that this doesn't have a section cut into it there so you can see the screen of the lid closed. Not the end of the world, but it's a bit annoying because some of the models of DP5 did have a case that had like a window in the top of the case, so you could have the waterproof case closed and still take a reading. Right, last things um, last, I guess. Last things last, not first things first. Um, I'll show you what other things would be in the case uh, because the cases of these are always nice to look at. Okay, so here's the case. So as I was saying, this took ages to get to me of all the accessories because the seller sent the Geiger counter as like the actual box unit separately from everything else due to problems with Ukrainian customs, sometimes stopping the complete kits. Um, but what ended up happening is I ended up getting the Geiger counter but not the box, so eventually he had to just really quickly ship me out an extra one. So good on him for doing that, obviously, because I was very disappointed when I only originally got the Geiger counter and none of the promised accessories. But it did all turn out alright in the end. So, let's open this up. So basically, if you're familiar with a DP5 case, it's very similar. Let's go over the bits of the case. So you've got your instruction manuals there, a thing that tells you what should be in the case. That's where the wand sits when you've got it folded, um, you know, like telescopic wand when it's all in. That sits there. You've got some additional bits you have under here. If I can slide this all over. So there's like extension cords for all that and um, a spare pair of headphones in there. Here's the contamination bags. They're like little condoms that go over the probe. The idea being you don't, de you know, you don't contaminate the probe when you're measuring stuff. But the nice thing with these probes is they're very easy to clean, unlike some Geiger counters. So that's that there. Then in there we've got the thing that lets you run it off a car battery or, you know, a 12 volt or 24 volt circuit as opposed to um, the batteries. But that's not as necessary of this one because it's a common sort of battery. But there you go, that's the box it comes in. I really do like these old wooden sort of cases the um, Soviet and sort of Polish civil defence stuff came in. So there you go, that's the Russian IMD5 uh, Geiger counter. It's a very, very nice unit. I definitely recommend picking one up if you want a sort of easy to work um, relatively modern but retro style Geiger counter because essentially this is the DP5 series just a lot user friendlier in a lot of ways and probably a bit more robust also it's in a modern radiation unit sort of because it's in RADs rather than Rontgens which um, I know a lot of people would want Sieverts technically who use them in the West 
but the rad is basically the sievert style numbers just um, translated in numbers much closer to the Rontgen unit so millirad is not too far off a millirontgen and a rad is very close to a Rontgen um, but it's technically using the absorbed dose of a sievert or a grey rather than a um, you know ionization of the air like the Rontgen does but there you go so if you want a classic style Geiger counter that makes a really cool ticking noise also you know you could get um, a piezo sort of you know positive and negative um, audio jack that goes in there that's completely possible to do to make it click out loud if you didn't want like you know the um, headphone clicking there you go but overall very nice units and obviously you can use them in a much more compact state if you take the wand off what you can just do is have the probe sitting in the bottom of the case like the DP5 or the you know the Polish DP66 or DP75 exact same idea and then you can put the you know telescopic extension pole into the um, case and then you've got the unit functioning as a unit but overall these are very very nice units um, if you can get one for under 200 pounds in like condition like this that's very good and if you can get the unit on its own for about 100 pounds that's absolutely excellent because these tend to be a little bit more expensive than DP5Vs and I definitely recommend them over the DP5V just because it is a lot more user friendly um, but obviously if you can only get them for a lot more than DP5 units I wouldn't bother but basically it's just a nice and more friendly user friendly version of a DP5V and it's kind of a shame these sort of units aren't in service anymore I'm, I'm, I'm sure some countries will use them in service for you know even if it's just civil defence type stuff but you know it has everything you'd want in a basic Geiger counter and it's got enough of the old retro style stuff that it you know is a cool collectible rather than it just being a little electronic unit which is a lot more practical for most people but not as cool